This is an example of how to use nullable types. Now, inside of a database, all fields can be nullable. You can actually specify whether they are not allowed to have nulls or not, but by default, you can have nullable fields in SQL Server. So that needs to be reflected inside of the generated C-sharp code. So, we, if you have a nullable integer inside of a database, you would think that you would have a nullable integer inside of C-sharp code, not just an int. So, let's look at the product table of the Acme Sales database. And there's quite a few fields here. And we'll, we're going to concentrate on the discontinued. It is a bit property. It does not allow null. And we have unit price, which is a money. And reorder level, which is an int. Essentially, reorder level is an integer. And it, is, it does allow nulls. And discontinued is a bit and it does not allow nulls. So if we go see what this looks like in code, we can look at this and we can create a project uh, object. Now this project object, it doesn't matter if we set it because we're just looking at the properties right now. So if we look at prod, prod, product.discontinued, you'll notice through the IntelliSense, this is a bool. I can set it equal to a bool. Now the reorder level is a nullable integer. Now I can set it equal to a nullable integer, or of course I can set it like that as well. I can create an int and actually set the nullable int.value to that, but of course you need to check whether this is null or not before you do that. But this allows you a way to check for nulls inside of your code and take appropriate action if they are null for some reason. So we have a not nullable and a nullable. Now the interesting thing are strings. If you hover over product.name, it says string. There's no such thing as a nullable string because all strings are nullable anyway. So you can't really look at that property and tell whether it's nullable or not because we have string, it is of type bar car. That's just going to equate to a string inside of uh, .NET code, which is a reference type and it's going to have, uh, it, it's going to allow null values or not. So, but there is actually an error that is raised. If you try to set null to this string, uh, to the name string, it will actually raise an exception in your UI because this is not nullable. Because the name is not a nullable field, so therefore I can never save it back to the database as null, so the API itself kicks it out. So if I were to do something like this, this actually will compile. However, at runtime, as soon as you hit this line of code, an exception will be raised back to this calling to, to this execution line right here, telling you that essentially this is a non-nullable field and you cannot set it that way. So this is an example of how you would use nullable types inside of your API.